The uh, topic today is going to be the telephone. Is it a friend or a foe? I think everybody will agree that uh, the key to success in real estate is prospecting, which means that you have to be on the phone. But most people are afraid of it for different reasons. I mean, they, in some cases, are fearful of it, and in other cases, they're terrorized by it. So is it fear or terror? And knowing the difference and learning to cope with it is the key. Let's define the two. First of all, fear. By Webster's definition, fear is an unpleasant feeling of anxiety or apprehension caused by the presence or anticipation of danger. Note that I put that in red, because in reality, they don't exist as far as the phone is concerned. It's just an inner feeling that we have. Or is it terror? And terror is defined by Webster. Where did I go here? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Terror is defined by Webster as an intense, overwhelming fear of violence or a threat of violence. Again, in red, because there really isn't any degree of violence involved in the telephone. But we have this misconception that there is. We're afraid of somebody not liking us or slamming the phone in our ear. You know, I talk in class about you are getting ready to make a phone call and you'll pick up the phone and you'll look at it for a half hour before you make the decision to dial the number and then you finally do dial a number and you let it ring three times and oh, thank God no one's home. Hang up. That's normal fear. The terror, when the terror comes in, it's the 800 pound gorilla sitting on the phone and that is a, a terror that just won't allow you to pick the phone up to make those calls. So either you have to get over that fear or in turn you have to learn to adjust to it. That's terror or fear is an unjustified anticipation of danger. That's fear. Unjustified anticipation of danger. In order to really study this in terms of your feelings about it, it's, it's better to get inside the head of the seller and to think like a seller for just a moment. Now one of the questions that you want to address when you are in a listening presentation is the question of where will you be moving when I sell your house? And based on the answer to that, you have to ask yourself two questions. The first question is, do they just want to sell? And the second question, which we'll come to in just a moment, is do they have to sell? With do they want to sell, I want to move to North Carolina to be near the grandkids. Well, they'd like to, but they don't have to. But if they have to sell, then you've got a tangible reason for selling. Prior purchase, facing foreclosure, transfer, estate sale, divorce sale, but it's time to deal with it. Understanding the seller means that they're not mad at you. They're mad at the circumstances that they find themselves in. Basically what they're doing is they're venting. So why, you may ask, because they're caught between two immovable objects. First of all, the seller has a rock and a hard place. I'm not sure you've heard the term before. But a rock, in this case, is the fact that I have to sell or I don't want a list. And the hard place, this is not what I want. Or, can't you read? It says no brokers. And so because of that, the seller is going to vent at us. And it's not that they're mad at us personally. It's that they're mad at the circumstances that they find themselves in. As an example, if you're driving down the street and you see a for sale by owner sign, when you see the sign, do you stop, go up, and knock on the door? Or do you simply write the address down and keep driving? or just pass by it all together. Now, if you think about one of the webinars that we did before, I made a statement on the webinar that do you let the opinions of others control what you will do and thus who you will become? Now, would you agree, and I'm sure you will, that the sellers saying whatever it might be is their opinion? And so I'm outside of that house, fearful of going up and knocking on the door, for fear that the seller's opinion, I can't, you read, I don't want brokers and they slam the door in my face, is because they're mad at me. So what I'm doing is allowing the seller, or the seller's opinion, to control what I'm going to do, and that's who I will become. Again, they're not mad at me. They're mad at the industry. They're mad at the circumstances they, they find themselves in. But the problem is that I may take it personally. And once I start taking it personally, then... You, well, you just can't take it personally in this business. If you do, it'll eat your life. There is no possibility of taking it personally and living through it. Let's develop some telephone techniques. First of all, habits to develop. One, you always want to have a mirror on your desk. This will force you to do what you're next going to see, and that is always smile. And then another thing that you need to do is train your voice. 
The only thing that you have going for you on your phone call is your voice. You need to be able to train the inflection, the tone, the modulation of your voice. Uh, have you ever listened to yourself on a tape recorder? And the first reaction most people have is, oh, that's not me. Well, in reality, it is. It's just not the voice that you're used to hearing. The voice that you are used to hearing is the voice that bounces off a wall 20 feet away and comes back and you hear it. When I'm teaching a class, I'll have a row of students and then another row and another row and another row, and every one of them in each row is hearing a different voice, and the voice I'm hearing is bouncing off the back wall and coming back to me. One way that you can train your voice, this is going to sound a little silly, but one way you can do this and really learn how to do it is to stand in front of a mirror. And when I say stand in front of a mirror, stand within one foot of a mirror. And then in turn, read your scripts out loud at least 10 times consecutively. And then in turn, turn it over and try to paraphrase it. Try to put it into your own words if you can. And then in turn, turn it back over and do it five more times and then try to paraphrase it. And keep doing that until you have it down. You, realistically, it shouldn't take more than about an hour at the most to be able to uh, learn one given script at a time. But why the mirror? First of all, you actually do read lips. Whether you realize it or not, you do. And in turn, you can even read them in reverse, which is what you're doing when you're looking in the mirror. But the real question is, why stand within one foot of a mirror? Well, the reason is that you're hearing your own voice. It goes back to what I was saying a moment ago. You're not bouncing off the wall behind you and coming, or in front of you, rather, and coming back. You're hearing your true voice. And it isn't until you began to hear it that you can learn to train it in the areas that you see on the board, inflection, tone, and modulation. One of the, uh, one of the things that also you'll do when you're standing that close to the mirror is that you will actually be able to concentrate on it more. Um, have you ever been to a concert and you look out and you see at the, on the stage, beside the stage, there are these mammoth speakers that are facing the audience. But up on the stage, you'll see smaller speakers. And they're not facing the audience. They're facing the entertainers. And the reason is that they have to hear their own voice in order to be able to control it. The same thing is true with a radio announcer in a radio studio. If you go into a studio, you'll always see them with a headset on. If you're watching the evening news, you'll see that little uh, contraption that goes around and comes into their ear. And people think, well, that's the producer talking to them. And it is. The producer is saying, OK, we're going on break at 3, 2, 1, break. But the other reason is that they can hear their own voice. And again, it's not until you can hear your real voice that you're going to be able to train it in the areas of inflection, tone, and modulation of your voice. There is a way to learn to think before you actually commit yourself to speaking. And that is an organization. I belong to this organization for over 10 years, and it's called Toastmasters International. When I first joined Toastmasters, and what they will tell you when you join, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment, but when you join Toastmasters, they'll give you a book, and it contains 15 different speeches, and you can give these speeches at any uh, uh, fashion you like. In other words, the first one is an icebreaker, but then every one after that, and there are 15 in the book, every one after that is to teach you to do something, such as uh, hand gestures, uh, eye contact, voice inflection, tone, things of that nature. But you can do them at your own speed. But when you join the organization, most people will tell you, and most people think, that it's to teach you how to talk on your feet, to stand up in front of a group and give a speech. And it does do that. But that isn't the real reason for the organization. When you go through Toastmasters, you will begin to think about what you want to say before you actually say it. You'll be anticipating what you're going to say before you say it. You might want to write this address down. It's www.toastmasters.org. And if you go to this website, in the top left corner, you'll find a, a place where you can find a club in your area. And all you do is enter in a, an area code. I'm not an area code, but a zip code. And it will tell you the closest clubs to you. The clubs have evening meetings, lunch meetings, breakfast meetings. Some are co-ed. Some are for women. Some are for men. But find one close to you. It's not an expensive organization to join. It's only about $25 a year. The only real expense you have is your meal. But it's a very formal organization. Everything is done according to uh, the rules of, uh, of speaking. In other words, they have a Toastmaster who is in charge of the meeting. And these rotate. These jobs rotate. They'll also have a, uh, a Table Topics Master. 
who will ask somebody to stand up and say, why is the sky blue? Or why is the grass green? Or what do you think about whatever? And they have to stand up for two minutes and then extemporaneously on their feet talk about that particular subject for two minutes. So it teaches you how to do that. But again, the main thing that this organization will teach you how to do is to be able to speak and think before you actually speak. <laughs>